Ah yes, another week of Hot Storm, where the player's performance dictates whether or not they'll get upgrade. If they suck, they'll never see an upgrade in their life. Mad cause bad, so sad. As always, there's a giveaway going on. If you want to take part in it, choose one player that you think will get a player of the game like performance. If they're the first to get it, you will be 100k richer on either the Xbox One or PlayStation 4. Remember, there are two tiebreakers. You gotta tell me how many goals and assists they'll get in that particular game and how many games it'll take for them to get that upgrade. With that said, let's start game one and it's against Mixed Act Team. I get a nice chance off the bat. After Char decided he needed to take a break hammering him in the offensive zone, he goes in on a breakaway and he makes it happen. It's a 4-on-4 four four at faceoff legend, Malkin takes the draw and nobody can get this puck until Malkin does and he goes bar down. What a sexy snipe by him. Unassisted because no one touched the puck and his teammates were in awe as to what just happened. Do nothing, he goes in like a chipmunk, he's gonna do it again, and I just have a really easy time getting to the net. One touch deeks, OP. So is Ovechkin, because he got the goal. Maybe he just made it look easy. He tries to go behind the net because he's a rap exploiter, and you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna make ourselves a sandwich, and he is gonna be inside. While the first period was all me, the second period was mostly him because he's gonna start this off, pass it back to the point, and snipe it. Cause I couldn't get in the way to block that shot. Halfway through the second, this guy thinks he's Barry Allen, the flash. He goes full speed, and then goes through my players with a nice toe drag to get another goal. It's time to break out, which means everyone should go forward, except uh, when you lose the puck in the neutral zone and your fencemen go forward, that, that's not good for you. This player was just way too fast for me. We head on into OT, where it looks like he has control in my zone while well, I'm about to change that as he takes a shot, and now it's just me, it's the guy behind me, and it's the goalie in front of me, as I score this goal and put him out of his misery. It's game two against the yellow guys. My opponent's going to slice and dice his way through my guys, which is not a good thing, but he doesn't bury it until uh, I do. Yeah, I buried it for him, of course. Brian mad. Brian go through and get puck and go through players. That's what he do right now. You'll see. You'll see. He'll do right here. Boom. Second guy go down early. We'll wait him out. Oh. 24 seconds left on the clock, all of a sudden it's at 10 seconds. I didn't realize I was talking that slowly. We got the first line out there, which means it's my worst line. A nice windmill deke, and we go in like a breakaway. The dying seconds of whatever period this is. First period, yeah, that's what, that, that's what it was. In this next play, I'm gonna just gently make my way into the offensive zone. Man face man wishes to corner me though, so we're gonna pass the puck and look at all this space. If that didn't go in, I was gonna eat my own mouth. Mmm, doing it right now. Mmm, tasty. While I was eating my own mouth, uh, he just he just scored off of that. Yep. Sorry, did, did you want me to do something about that? Well, don't worry. I'm about to. Flashbacks of the first period. It's done with three seconds left. And you know what he's going to do? Pretty much the same thing. Again, end of the period. Like, what are we doing in the middle of the period? Nice pass to Malkin, who tucks this one. That's going to end the game in case you guys thought that he was coming back. After the game, I had a pleasant surprise as I won the league title or D1 title. I haven't opened one of these on Hutstorm before and gold collectible, that's okay. I was saving these for my other video, but since my other video is already released, what else should I be saving them for? Up next, I have a duel against a member of the Reddit Hockey Club. Good guy and an even better player. He was on a 10 game win streak before coming into this one. He's going to open up the bag of goals with this really nice one timer. Kessel just glided into that one, it's pretty sexy. In this play, he's going to try to force something with Crosby. We're going to take the puck away from him, and as McDavid goes in, he sees this Crosby getting some momentum, and that's how you Crosby. 5 on 3 penalty kill, yikes. We're going to win this face off with time winding down. We're going to clear this to the guy coming out of the penalty box, but he kind of gets it pretty awkwardly. That's okay, do nice, sexy windmill. Uh, nothing comes out of it. Aww. It's a very nice pass. Now it's a one-on-one. -on -one. What's gonna happen here? He holds back a little bit. It's now a two-on-one, and he scores that goal. Kinda surprised he got that because I read it all the way. See what I did there? I wanna look at this instant replay and see what happens. I still don't understand. But that's okay. It was a nice finish. 
After that, he's going to enter my zone, hold on to the puck really nicely. As he gets this puck in deep, trying to get a cross crease one timer. Here I thought I was going to get him, get the puck back, and I did. But then he gets it right back, and I do a bad job of trying to get back into position. Nice goal by him. I think it's going to be a theme of this video me going down by a few goals and then coming back. I mean, uh, whoa, so sorry. Spoilers. But you know that I'm going to try to come back. Why would I not want to try to come back? Why would I would just want to lose the game? And you think that I just like to lose games? You think that's that's real? What am I, the avalanche? No, I'm going to get this D to D one timer and it's going to go in. So this guy's wampanogging me on the face off. He's doing a really good job there. When Bergeron's on the ice, you know I'm going to win that face off. Do a pretty sloppy job entering his zone, but I just keep applying pressure whenever I lose the puck. He goes down early, but it's not good enough. For some reason, he passes that out. I would have done it too, so it's okay, but I'm gonna go in and take a slap shot. We're all tied up as I am trying to make my way over into his zone. I get poke, nice poke from him. To go around all of his players and try to establish some control in his zone. That's what all these small passes allow me to do. That one almost got intercepted, but look at all that space in front. That's just a one-timer waiting to happen. As my top line shows us why they're the top line. Because they need upgrades, that's why. 30 seconds left and he's pulling the goalie. Why is this play important? Because Chara is going to get an assist and when he gets this assist, that's going to be his third point of the night, which means he's going to be the one getting the player of the game upgrade. This is after only three games. Looks like he got three assists. McDavid coming pretty close. A goal and two assists for three points, but he needed four. We're gonna look for this expansion Chara, not cheap. 5k for an 87 expansion card, and kinda got ripped off. Pretty sure that guy's controlling the market. I don't care too much, but of course, if anybody else is going for that Chara, that guy's also probably making bank. So now we just upgraded one of the slowest players on my team. I am ecstatic. We got rid of a bomber synergy, and we added movable object, which uh, doesn't do anything. Good enough, we're not gonna have bomber, and we're not gonna have any synergies on this team. We're just gonna have like high overall players. Hopefully when we get more special edition cards, they'll have multiple synergies, and we can just, I guess, have more than one synergy activated. Letterman ends up being the winner of 100k this week. That could be you next week. Coming up next is OVU8 Lation. Am I playing Grill right now? Grill good, but McDavid even better. As he steals this puck, goes into the zone, he's gonna make some nice moves, but it doesn't go in. That's okay, we're gonna go around the net, get another opportunity in front of the net, and get a cross crease one timer. Here, he, she, it is gonna get a nice opportunity. Did not think he's gonna have the speed to pull that move off, but he does. Unfortunately, he doesn't get it, so we're going the other way as Yager is going to get this to Malkin with a quick snipe. The puck goes around the world. I love that. The puck doesn't just stop when it hits the net. It goes all the way around the net. Here's some more speed being showed off. It doesn't really matter who I use as he's going to score that goal. As we're heading the other way, I'm thinking, hmm, kind of hungry right now. Hungry for goals or not. Damn, that was, that was a nice save. As I poke check this puck and leave it behind for him. Last minute of the game, and here comes Malkin, the beast, the animal, the Russian. And I just put a period at the end of that one. Game 5 against this guy named Blackout, and this was a really defensive battle as I struggled to get into his zone as you guys see here. When I finally do, he didn't give me much room or much options to do anything. I'm gonna get a nice opportunity by getting this puck back to the point and then going in with my defenseman with the redirect. He's gonna pass this puck out and go towards my zone. I expected him to do a little move there and that was costly as this one-on-one, -on -one, he ends up winning. Not the game, just on that play, relax. We get some opportunities here or there, but Ovi, is he thirsty? Someone forgot to fill up his Gatorade bottles. Why is that important? Because Carlson is gonna try to go in and get a shot. He makes a nice poke check, and Ovechkin, he's done with this game. He's done with his teammates, and this is how the Russian machine makes things happen. Passes it to Carlson, expects him to pass back, doesn't quite get it immediately, but then he goes in. Just an empty net to shoot at. We go to OT, off the faceoff, win it backhand, and it's just all me. He doesn't switch any players, and I get a free shot at the net. So who got a player of the game performance that game? Hmm, could anyone get three points when I only had two goals? That's a good question. Something tells me that's not possible. Let me get my calculator out here. Beep, boop, boop, beep. No, maybe it is. Hmm. If one person 
gets 1.5 points per goal, that's actually possible. So, how do you do that, Achara? Launches a bomb at the net. On this play, look at the craziness that's happening in front of the net. My poke checks were solid. Like three chances to score on a sprawling goalie right there. That's pretty crazy as I intercept this pass, we're gonna go the other way, and he does not play that well defensively. Tsunada, and uh, guess who gets mad at this penalty taken right here? That was a high stick to Crosby's face. We're gonna go into instant replay on this one, and look, my stick right underneath the other guy's stick. So how was this a high stick exactly? Oh, I see. I just grazed the top of his helmet, and it's a high stick. Okay, game. Okay. Crosby embellishing. That's that's just ridiculous. I want to challenge that play. Well, I'm on the PK, and on the PK, he gets that, so he's within one. I was being dumb there. It was a good goal for him. It's just a stupid penalty to take. In his zone, we're going to fight for this puck. We're going to get it back. And Weber all alone at the dot. It's a little too fast for the goalie to see. Off the ensuing faceoff immediately after McDavid to Backstrom to another Chara one timer. Slap bombs, slap moms. He ends up quitting right after sending me uh, GG. Kind of wondered. I mean, there's still like an entire period there. And by three, anything could happen. This next game. Kane starts us off with the nice goal. I was going to stop at 5, but I threw in a 6th game here because the upgrades were a little lackluster, Chara being the only one to get the upgrade. Here I'm just going to move out of the way for him as he gets a nice goal. I gotta stop doing that. I gotta stop moving out of the way for people. I know I'm a nice guy, but come on, I should be like opening doors to the penalty box instead. Milady, I think you should be the first one to go into the penalty box, not me. I like this next play a lot. I make some sweet one-touch passes without even holding on to the puck for more than a second, and that shows some obscene patience to get a one-timer in front of the net. And then Weber is gonna come out with the windmill dangles coming in here. He opts to trip me, go for the penalty shot. I'm gonna do my little move expecting a goalie dive. He doesn't go for the goalie dive, but he sits on the right side the whole time. He had an empty net on the left. And I'm expecting him to move there the whole time because it's wide open. So he got me really good there. In his zone, make a bad pass right to his guy. Look at this sweet windmill deke that he's about to do. He knows he can't do anything right there, so he forces a pass that somehow makes it into the back of the net. So I want to know what a goalie is thinking when Kane is right here all by himself for the longest time in the world. I certainly know what they're thinking when Kane misses the net from there though. He's gonna get a breakaway, he's gonna bury it. Nice move by him to put him up by one. Here I get another breakaway, you know what, he wants to go the penalty shot route again. I choose to switch things up this time, go for a different move, but he's gonna come out with a flying poke check. I just barely dodged it. And right now I'm thinking how much that NBC logo keeps showing up. We get a lot of free advertisement through that. Another breakaway, he decides not to go for the penalty shot, but instead comes out with the goalie and I go all the way to the side and score a goal. Next play, I get a nice hit on him. He isn't coming back, or is he? Yeah, he is. Oh, well, crap. Right after that, he's gonna break out, and here I'm gonna expect a little move. He doesn't do the little move. He gets it in deep, doesn't have much options here, passes it back to the defenseman, Carlson. Ends up getting the GWG. Since we had a pretty lame week for player of the game performances, no offense to Chara, I figured we can try something new and kind of award like a team of the week type of performance. I guess it would be more along the lines of player of the week because I'm not going to be awarding everybody an upgrade, that's just crazy. On the right, you guys can see all the different players on my team. I recorded all of their stats from the games that were played, other than the first game. I forgot to get the first game. doesn't matter. Who cares? Probably wouldn't skew the data too, too much. The numbers that are in dark green mean that that player is the leader in that stat. So Doan has the most goals, McDavid the most assists, Weber the highest plus minus, Chara the most hits, and so on. So to make it somewhat random rather than be like, oh, I want to give Doan an upgrade because uh, he's super slow and he needs an upgrade, I figured, why don't we make it a little random? 
by rolling a die. This isn't a six-sided die. I decided to modify it and make it an eight-sided die, which looks kind of like this. Looks crazy, like a weird-looking mythical creature. And then down here, you can see by this legend who the winner would end up being. So if I were to roll this eight, I would choose the worst performing player out of all all these players. In that case, it would be Burns because he has a bunch of red. And he finished with the lowest amount of total points of two. While the best player would probably be Weber at 26. So the other thing is if a person already received an upgrade this week, such as Chara, we're just not going to include him. We'll just go to the next highest person. Last thing is if there's a tie between two players, such as uh, for the amount of shots, we'll just go with whoever has the lowest overall, which I don't have recorded here, so hopefully I remember who has a lower overall. So let's see who wins. Rather than just rolling this once, because that would just be boring, I'd just be like, oh, two, oh, okay, we're done. No, we got to click multiple times, make it a little more intense, and uh, we'll click it ten times. One, it's the same number. Two. It's the same number again. Three. Four. I don't know if I was doing that right. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. It's a two. Two means that the person with the most assists gets the upgrade. Congratulations to Connor McDavid for winning the giveaway. Oh, that's, that's, wait, that's not how it works, is it? Congratulations to him for getting an upgrade. The giveaway winner was actually announced earlier in the video when I got the upgrade. So let's throw him onto the team and see what this team looks like now. We activated Offensive Juggernaut, which eh, has a small boost to three players, Burns being one of them who has not done anything. So hopefully we can see him do something. But to be fair, he only comes out like once a period on the ice because he's on the last line. Not his fault. What we're also going to do is move McDavid to the second line, replace him with Yager. So Yager has more ice time since he is the smaller overall. So this is what the team looks like. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and best of luck in the next giveaway where this team will become even stronger.